the Lawyers as Peacemakers, Lawyers as Problem Solvers Conference was a, a program that, that came together as a result of a, a group of female attorneys who were all kind of the same mindset that we wanted the practice of law to be different, that we were in kind of unique settings, um, uh, Maureen as a holistic attorney, um, some of the folks were educators, some were mediators. My, my role is in, in trying to be a part of the Lawyers as Peacemakers conference was to bring the private bar into that at, through the process of uh, uh, being the pro bono coordinator and saying, here's something we'd like to give to you uh, since you are involved in the delivery of civil legal assistance to indigents and we feel like the way the adversarial system is set up, it really doesn't do the indigent client that we serve, um, it doesn't give them the kind of justice that they need. They're still voiceless, they're still powerless um, in the system, and the system doesn't work very well. So we want you to look at this, since you're doing volunteer work for us, look at this conference. There's all kinds of different things that you can look at, different ways that we might be able to have an impact on the system and justice as it's administered to our client base. And so we brought all of these different things together. I, I knew about mediation, I've been doing mediation work, and I'm familiar with the concept of restorative justice. We'd started a victim offender reconciliation program in Jackson, and we'd worked on a youth court and done some, done some things in my other job. But what I didn't realize was how huge it was, you know, the whole idea of therapeutic justice and collaborative law and cooperative lawyering, all of those kinds of things that were featured over the course of the conference were new to me. And we'd been talking uh, in Memphis amongst ourselves about what was going on and um, there's a lot of concern in the Memphis bar about the lack of civility and about how people particularly attorneys, treat each other and treat other litigants in the process. And as we were a group of us, we had gone to a workshop on collaborative lawyering, and afterwards a group of us had, had sat down and we were having some coffee and cookies, and, and someone said, I really like that. How can we bring this to Memphis? And so I said, well, I think that legal services has a role to play in this. I think that legal services um, it, it should be on the cutting edge and at the forefront of bringing new um, systems into the way we practice law because I see this as a big benefit for our client base. It's very empowering. Um, it's very much, I think, the way that law ought to be practiced, particularly when you're talking about between individuals. Um, as they try to resolve their differences within their family, with small businesses, and, and those kinds of things. I said, well, let me take a look at what legal services can do. We got together a little group, and we'd meet at lunch, and we'd talk about what was going on. And the more we talked, the more I thought, well, if I offer this training to volunteer attorneys, and in exchange for that, they agree that they'll provide free representation to clients, I might be able to pull this off. Well, serendipitously, um, the, the Tennessee CLE Commission had a $1.5 million excess from fines and things like that. And they, they said, we don't know what to do with this money. There's no reason for us to hold it. We're going to grant it out. And so what basically ended up happening was that I ended up with about $16,000 um, that I had to do CLE programs. So I thought, well, wow. okay, I can do four CLE programs this year. I'll do four next year. But, you know, 16000 that's not that much money, so I need to be kind of careful about what I'm doing. Um, and so through the help of some of the attorneys who've been working on the Lawyers as Peacemakers conference with me, we found a, a church that was willing to let us have their facilities for free. Um, we only had to pay for lunches. The CLE Commission waived all of the 
registration fees that they usually have. Of course, it was their money originally, so why would they need it back? And um, while I'm doing that and trying to keep my costs low, back over here, there's a whole other group of attorneys. There's the uh, American Trial Lawyers College, and one of my volunteer attorneys became president of that and says, you know, here's another $2,000. And then another attorney at a different law firm said, well, you know, Linda, you've done such a great job. I, here's another $2,000. And I'm just, all of a sudden, money is, is kind of flowing in. And then we thought, well, okay, now we've got plenty of money. We can do the collaborative law training. How do we want to structure this? So this small group got together and we talked about what would be the best way to bring the collaborative law training to Memphis. And we thought, well, instead of just throwing it open, let's see if we can't recruit people that we know are interested and are willing. And we were able to get together a group of about 25 lawyers and counselors and financial planners, and we had the conference over a two-day period. And my hope is um, that we'll kind of start a movement in Memphis that takes the concept of collaborative lawyering and makes it mainstream for everybody, not just for my client base, but for everybody. And, and I think that's where our group is looking to go to as well. But while we're doing that, I'm still going to be working on restorative justice issues. I'm hoping to set up a not-for-profit mediation center. I'd like to train lay people on conflict resolution and circle using circles to try to bring you know justice to their communities so that they can do this on their own without having to engage the juvenile justice system. Working within some of the schools as well to you know, keep some of the kids out of the juvenile justice program. Maybe do a little bit of advocacy on the special ed front. So I've got a lot of plans. I just love it. It's not work. It's not work. It, it's, it's, you know, somebody said to me, what do you do for fun? Well, this is what I do for fun because I have fun doing this. I get energy from it. Um, I, I'm not the kind of person who sits still real easily. In fact, as I'm sitting here, my legs jiggling is probably going to show up on the film. Um, I just have a lot, I've always had a lot of energy and I, I, I finally found a way to direct that energy in a positive fashion. And my son is 23, and uh, he's um, always played football and basketball. And he, uh, he did a Facebook page. And I'm looking through it, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you know, he's got pictures of you know, Britney Spears and all these really, you know, of sexy girls and football players, and I'm just going through his books. Oh what do you expect? He's 23, and it comes to who are your heroes? And I listed as one, and I think that for me, knowing that they feel that way about me, that my children have that passion, it just it moves me to tears. I don't know what else to say. It just gives me everything I need to be a whole person and to be a real lawyer. I'm not a litigator, but I'm a counselor. The highest calling of the law is to help people resolve their conflicts in a way that gives them whatever it is that they need. And our system doesn't do that. Our system can adjudicate rights, particularly property rights, but it doesn't do a very good job of helping families resolve whatever it is that they need to be resolved within them. And I think it makes it worse in a lot of ways. So, and the highest calling of a lawyer is to help their clients and to help the system bring about a resolution that works for everybody.